What's up, boys? Welcome back to the best YouTube channel in the world. Okay, we're not we're not that great, but welcome back to Terrence School. It's been a while. Uh, sorry for abandoning you guys. If you guys, I think I have been uh, a mean, awful YouTuber, then please post. Tell me, you are just simply the best in the comments, and that will really teach me. Anyway, uh, today I'm going to be teaching you guys my new standard TVP build. Uh, I won a lot of games with Dreamac uh, in Dreamac with this. I beat Harstim with it and Lil Bal, and maybe DNS as well. In general, this build was very successful for me. I won most of my games doing this. Uh, in short, what it's going to be, uh, it's pretty much just a standard build, but with a twist to it. I'm going to make it a little bit safer. I uh, help you guys scout uh, against cheeses and all that. And I'm going to teach you guys a quick follow-up as well. Uh, it's not a super long game. I'm not going to go into all the macro details. I'm pretty much going to go up to the three base saturation. Uh, until when, if you execute this properly, you should have a really good chance to kill the Protoss. Anyway, it just starts very standard, uh, 16 barracks, 16 gas. And then when the change comes in, uh, is right now when we're going to take our second gas. Uh, basically making this look like a one base build, but I'm going to explain some more details about it in a bit. But it's pretty much still a macro build. You might be down a few SCVs compared to a normal one, uh, but I'll get into that later. Uh, for now, yeah, this is just a basic build. You don't have to SCV scout with this. It's an advantage. Uh, and basically, what this build is going to be is you're going to make a few units early on before your expansion. There's also going to be a bit of mind game effect because of the double gas, especially when they probe scout, of course. Uh, and yeah, it's just going to be very good against cheese. I know you guys complain a lot to me like, what do I do against proxy void ray? What do I do against this proxy or that? Um, and yeah, I know it gets kind of annoying. Uh, so I was just planning to do a nice safe TVP build. And then next video, I'm going to upload a nice safe TVT build for you guys. Uh, and as always, I'll be trying to upload the replay in the description. And with trying, I mean that I forget sometimes, but I'll definitely do it eventually. So if you want to really check on the details, you can check it from the replay. But so far, it's very standard. Uh, 16 barracks, 16 gas, 17 gas. And then with the SCP that finishes the barracks, you wall off immediately. And this is kind of where the mind games already come into play. Like if you look at the Protoss point of view, he's going to see you're on one base. Uh, if you build the factory to close, he's going to maybe even think that you're doing a one base all in with tanks or something like that. But in reality, you're just going to make two Reapers and a Heli and expand off of it. So you're delaying your expansion, uh, but you're going to be able to get more scouting in the meantime. Now, this is when uh, the unit movement starts getting important. Because you didn't SCV scout, you have to scout around your base. So in this case, uh, I, you know, sometimes I, I play a little mind games with opponents on the ladder. So I think I was probably expecting his probe to come back. But the best way to use this Reaper uh, is to actually scout for the proxy Void Ray first of all. Because proxy gate, uh, you can scout that too by going here. But proxy Void Ray is the most like imminent danger. You, even with this build, if there's a proxy Void Ray and you don't scout it, uh, you're going to have a tough time. So if you want to be completely safe, you should definitely scout the air area around your base first. Uh, if you want to keep up the mind games, because that's basically what I'm doing here, yeah, you can deny the probe so they don't know that you're actually just paying an expansion build. But it's definitely important to get your scouting in at some point. So here you can see I was waiting for a probe that never came. So now I'm scouting around my base for Stargates. And you're actually going to have two Reapers and then you're going to go into the reactor. And with two Reapers, you should be able to scout pretty much everywhere. Like you can, you can even scout the hair for like a DT shrine or what you want. This is a really nice pickup, by the way, killing the probe. Uh, and and you can you can tell already, right? The, the, for the Protoss, this is super hard to read. Uh, for all he knows, I could be on one base uh, making Marine Tank right now. Uh, reality, I'm just playing an expansion build. And I know you could think, but aren't you just behind compared to a normal Reaper expand? Uh, but the thing is, I actually calculated the timings of this build. And since there are some things you can skip, you're not actually that far behind. Uh, basically what it came down to is that you're going to be about four or five SCVs down compared to a normal fast Reaper expand, but you're going to have faster tech and better scouting and a safer early game at the same time. And it's always possible that you just win with your mind games like the Protoss. I know, especially at lower MMR, they might overreact a bit, start making a lot of batteries and stuff. Uh, well, you're just playing completely innocent. Uh, so in the end, it doesn't set your build that far back, but has a lot of potential. Oh, one thing that's very important, by the way. Um, on this map, it's pretty simple because it's light shade. So there's only one path through the middle. So you can just send your Reapers and units here into the bush to find for the Adept. If you play on a map like Oxide, where there's two paths, 
um, you actually have to keep track of where the adept usually goes. Like on a map like Oxide, an adept will usually take uh, the straight path from the base. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see the map in front of you right now. Uh, but on anyway, in maps where there's two paths, you do have to take some time to figure out where adepts and stuff usually go. Because it's really annoying if the adept shades into your base and you're just transitioning here already, right? So anyway, uh, you make two Reapers and one Hellion, and then you're going to go into Mines. Uh, I'll try to play the build a bit slower, just so you guys can catch up, uh, of course. And once again, the replay will be there. Now, this is an important part. Uh, before I go in here, let me just show you guys the plan. Uh, you're going to make two Widow Mines uh, and a Medivac. And then on the factory, you're going to make a Tech Lab. So your plan is basically to do a two Widow Mine drop, and then you're going to get into Raven Tank. Now, really important with the unit movement here is, uh, is that these units give you a guaranteed scout. The only way you could possibly not scout is if they would make enough buildings to block this and enough buildings to fully wall this, right? Uh, this might take a little bit of practice, but in, honestly, it's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is throw a grenade uh, behind the Protoss units and they will jump out and you can walk in. If you're new to this, you might mess it up a few times, but it's really not uh, some kind of legendary micro trick. You guys can definitely do this. Uh, but it is important that you get in with these units. Like you did sacrifice a little bit of early economy, like I said, but you do get a 100% guaranteed scout if you do it like this. And that's important against Protoss these days because against Protoss is really hard to scout the wall off the cliff and the have units at the front. And sometimes you kind of find yourself guessing, you know, like what should I really be doing? So in this case, uh, you can just jump in uh, for almost free. If you lose a unit, that's fine. As long as you get the scout in. Uh, I sent the Hellion back because it was abandoned on the outside. But if you can run in with everything, you do it. So priority number one, you scout. Uh, well, we scouted the Robo here because it was in the wall. And we scouted the Twilight here. And then you go for pros. Honestly, with this build, I don't expect to kill any pros. Like, to be honest, it happens pretty frequently. But you don't really have to. Like in this case, I killed uh, four extra probes. Remember, I killed one at the start. And that's actually massive. Like, this feels like a really good situation for me. I got a completely free scout and I killed three probes, which means that, just like I explained, our economy is going to be uh, as good as it would normally be in a TVP. Plus, we have faster tech, plus we scouted. So this is already a fantastic game for me. Now, uh, important here as well, as soon as your attack is over, you have to make this bunker. Uh, you're, uh, you are going to be a bit low on Marines at the start, so don't try to like... You know, uh, maybe he's not going to move across. I'll survive without a bunker. I'll pull some SCVs now. Just just get the bunker down. Then next step, you send out a two Widow Mine drop. Remember that I said you play uh, two Widow Mines into Tech Lab. Then you put the Starport on the Tech Lab here. And you make another Tech Lab for the factory. Uh, this is also an important timing. The fact that you get this Raven, I think it's about 20 seconds faster compared to a normal build, means that your Raven, I know it sounds crazy, it's actually going to be in time for Dark Templars. Um, in this case, I scouted, it could have actually been DTs because he had a Robo and a Twilight, which is designed for a, either uh, just regular Blink or a Dark Templar drop, right? And with this build, the Raven is actually in time, which is really nice. Now... After you start your Raven and your Tech Lab here, uh, it's it's a very simple three racks follow up, but I'm just gonna walk you guys through it anyway. You will add two more barracks, and obviously these are gonna uh, go onto these Tech Labs. Now I'm such a genius that I left this Adept in on purpose because I knew uh, he would miss Micro and not kill my SCP, of course. Uh, really though, just close the defaults, okay? <laughs> so here I'm gonna go in with the Mind Drop, and from this point on. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty standard follow-up. You get your three racks, and then you get your E-Base. If possible, um, always save your Medivac with a mine in it. Uh, and you're going to see why. Like, in this case, I went in because I didn't see a single unit. If you actually see three Stalkers here, guys, uh, just chill the Medivac here. Like, it's a really good pressure, because if Protoss players do not play Stargate, just this Medivac here is going to force them to keep the Stalkers at home, which is super nice. As you can see, I feel like normally they would leave two Stalkers behind, but you know, the, the more the better for us, I suppose. So uh, yeah, if you can ever keep one mine here at least, it's just a threat for them. And I have to look at it in the entire game. And if they don't, the mine is going to get burrowed here at some point and kill five probes. So just like I said, we have the three racks with the eBay uh, at the front. Now there is one thing you can do different here. Um, if you 
play against people that go like four gate blink a lot, one thing you could do is get this third barracks a little bit later and uh, make a second tank instead of just one tank from the tech lab because that's that just uh, it, it helps so much. Like if you get four gate blinked and you only have one tank, it does get pretty rough. Now obviously so far uh, I I've had perfect scouting. I got probes. I saw the amount of gateways. Uh, I saw the third base. Just all benefits of the build, by the way. So I didn't have to worry about anything. If you're not sure if they're gonna attack you with blink stalkers, uh, the response would be to make one bunker here extra and make another tank. This is always how I love to position a tank, by the way. Uh, this feels very safe at the front. Uh, they, would, they would shoot stalkers that try to hit your wall. And at the main, this is also an important move. If you keep the raven here, you can see observers that are around here, which is very important. Like you never really want, I, I'm honestly pretty bad at it. If you watch my games, you're gonna see it a lot that an observer is just like chilling here. Uh, but keeping the raven at the edge and moving it around now and then is actually very good to try and catch observers because it's super annoying. Then let me teach you guys one thing about the order of things because I feel like you guys might get that wrong sometimes. Um, you would actually always make the reactors on the factory and starport before combat shields. And the reason is that combat shield finishes really fast and you don't actually need it that fast. It's a, if, you, by, if you make a reactor here, by the time you move across with medevacs, your combat shield is still going to be done. So your priorities are always plus one attack, stim. Then you get the reactors on these buildings and then combat shields. And I feel like some of you might think it's small details, but these things actually matter. Like uh, getting combat shields in this way doesn't delay any timing at all. Delaying your reactor for combat shield could actually delay your push by 15 seconds or so, uh, which is obviously a big deal. Especially when you're talking about TVP power spikes, like as you can see right now, Protoss has two gates. He's going up to six now and probably eight later. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so every warp in for Protoss is eight units. So if you hit 15 seconds late, uh, that's pretty close to eight new units. So yeah, it, it just shows how big of a difference it is. If you ever compare your timing to a pro, and you feel like, oh man, this doesn't work at all. And you check the replay, you see you hit one minute 10 late. That could literally be 24 more units for Proda. So uh, just keep in mind that all these things make a really big difference. Now, I would personally recommend, uh, here's the actual observer. I told you guys I was going to miss it. I would recommend to not really play five racks um, with this build. I feel like this build has a really fast timing, but you, you know, as I said, you do miss four or five SCV. So it is better to ramp up your economy a little bit. Hey, I was actually looking for it. Uh, when you listen to your own advice, I'm the greatest. Um, yeah, so just, just so you wonder, I backed off here because I played against Blink and you never know where the stalkers are. I could have chased it in this case and killed it, but if there were eight stalkers here, I would have lost my Raven and probably the four Marines too. So uh, better safe than sorry, I suppose. Uh, just hunt observers around your base. And I'm going to teach you guys a maneuver that I really like. And personally, I'm going to stop using this at this point because I've abused it so much. Uh, but I think you can get a lot of free wins like this. Uh, I always pull aside 16 Marines when my medevacs are going to finish. And then I like to drop around the map. And you could you could drop in any way you want. And you could also push just frontally. But I really like to send my medevacs to the corner and around. Because if you send them like this, they will arrive at the same time as your frontal push. And this, uh, it looks simple guys, but... I've legit killed pretty much every Protoss in Europe just with this timing attack. Like this build, this exact timing, it just it just flows super well. Uh, it, it, it works very nicely. Uh, it's just awesome. Uh, always try to get 47 SCVs, by the way. This is the magical SCV count. Uh, and the reason for that is, is that you want uh, four gases after the third CC. And then you want one SCV making the uh, CC. And then you're going to use two to make the barracks. So 47 is the perfect moment to cut SCVs. As you can see, I'm going to make my CC now. And then I should be adding the gas and two barracks. Though I might prioritize unit production as well because I'm not making max units. Now, this is exactly the time you want to move out on. Uh, the medevac finished, the extra medevacs. These two are obviously on the way. And you can see that the timing of this works out perfectly. Uh, and the reason why it works out uh, even better is because Protoss players will pretty much always scout that you move out. Like, you know, it could be this observer, because uh, I didn't scout it, of course. It could be an adept here or a probe or a pylon, whatever. They're pretty much going to see you. And that means they will also pay less attention to this. Uh, one easy way to hotkey this, by the way, is to hotkey everything besides the raven and hotkey the raven on something else. And just click a raven on one of your units so it follows. Like, you, you, it's, 
it would be really annoying to press your main army hotkey and your raven hotkey to go somewhere. So literally just click your uh, raven on one of your units and then you can hotkey your medevac somewhere else. Uh, you can also not hotkey them because you're probably not going to have to micro them right away. But if you do ever find yourself getting caught, like let's say there are stalkers here, you you know, it would be the best to react instantly. Uh, so yeah, having them on hotkey is optimal. It's not necessary. I think hotkeying this is more important. So here you go, we're gonna boost in. Um, at this point, you obviously have to look at them because if there's stalkers here, you would retreat instantly. Actually a cool move that I like, uh, just, just another quick tip. If you do see stalkers here, what I like to do is just boost around and then go here and then flank the army that's in the front. Um, because that's the, that's the advantage of having medevacs. You can carry your units and move them around really fast, especially if you have the boost available. So do make sure to look at them at this point. And then try to hit at the same time. Obviously, by the way, I get it if you can't really attack at the same time. Like it does take a lot of uh, APM to execute that properly. So if you want to move the drop in first, and then once you see a reaction move with this army, that's totally fine too. Like you really don't have to hit at the, at the most important time. Uh, one thing that is important is to do it properly. So if you can't do that, like at the same time, that's fine. Take it a bit slower and that's it. And what I'm talking about mostly is the Raven usage. The best use of the Raven uh, against this army, like here I just have too many units so I don't have to do anything. Um, and you, by the way, you can see how many units I have because my army is bigger at the front. Or well, I would honestly say it's roughly the same, plus I have 16 Marines here. Um, but yeah, the Raven uh, spells are the most important. Uh, it doesn't look like we're actually going to get to see that this game because he looks kind of dead already. But if you play against Colossus, you matrix the Colossus 100%. If there's no Colossus, you always pop an anti-armor missile on the Zealots because it helps an insane amount. Uh, one other possible scenario is... Uh, does he have Storm here? Yeah. Let's say this Prism was done. He has four High Templars in the Prism. You can also Interference Matrix the Prism so he can't drop the Templars anymore. And the way back at home, just like I said, by the way, you get the third CC. Uh, you add two Barracks. And then you get the fourth Gas. And that's basically you know, the setup for the three base already. Uh, and then after you make those, you start making more NCVs. So once again, you cut at 47, you add your 30 C and your extra barracks uh, and your gas, and then you start making SCVs again. And the reason for that is, is that uh, for Terran at this point, uh, it, it, it's just one of those fine macro details. It's actually too expensive to make units and SCVs and barracks and the CC at the same time. Like if you actually make SCVs, you won't be making any of these units, for example. Uh, like I already would have been at like 55 SCVs or something like that. And you can see, you know, even now I can't afford full production, but then even less. So, and yeah, I, like I said, I'm not going to show you guys the full macro game today. I have a lot of other videos that are basically on full macro games. Now, um, I think I could have let you guys to win this fight as well at this point. So if you do get the macro down, trust me, it's going to be very powerful. Um, and yeah, if you do want to check out some uh, macro videos, I have those as well. Once again, Replays in the description. Uh, after this build, after this video, I'm going to release a safe TVT opening video as well. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. And yeah, thank you guys for watching my video again. And uh, see you next time. Adios.